Hey everybody, Mr. White here. We are going to talk the wave interaction absorption. Uh, so we will be mentioning reflection here and there, but this video will primarily focus on absorption. Um, so stick around, there are going to be some demos, uh, some stuff that pertains to the summertime that's going to be pretty helpful. Um, overall, this is a pretty interesting thing because it's happening constantly and uh, explains quite a bit about what you see, what you feel. Um, so I, I think it's going to be useful for you. Um, so when we're talking about the absorption of energy, what we're really talking about is the conversion of energy. Um, and a key player in this is the law of conservation of energy. So energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed. Um, we always have the same amount in the universe, it's just being transferred around. So we can always account for it. That's really important here to, to understand and get your mind around. Um, so and absorption can happen with any type of energy, whether it be acoustic, seismic, electromagnetic. Um, so sound, why would we want to uh, absorb sound? Um, you know, in a theater, if you ever look on the walls, you'll see those panels, they kind of look like decoration, but really those are for absorbing sound. And we would want to absorb sound because if you didn't absorb sound waves, they would continuously bounce off the walls and everything you hear from the stage or from the uh, movie screen uh, or the speakers would essentially be echoing over and over and it would make everything incoherent. It would be really hard to understand the performance. Um, electromagnetic energy, uh, that also travels in waves like sound and it can have different frequencies like sound. Um, when those type of waves have different frequencies, we have uh, that results in microwaves, radio waves, visible light waves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma. Um, it's a different type of wave, but again, waves just carry energy and in this case it's electromagnetic energy so electromagnetic energy can be absorbed um, and that's constantly happening around you within you um, that's really key to what we're going to be talking about um, so how do you know when energy is being absorbed uh, and the answer is a change occurs and that change could be warming up it could be increasing kinetic energy it could be a damage of some kind um, or an increase of another type of energy like electrical or chemical energy. Um, I have a few examples on the screen here. I'm showing sound energy warming up a wall. So if sound encounters a wall, if the wall absorbs that energy, the sound doesn't disappear. Um, what happens is, is the sound is absorbed by the wall. And if we really think about what sound is uh, you know, at the fundamental level, it's just vibrating particles of a medium. And when those vibrating particles run into another medium, so if the air hits the wall, the vibrating air from the sound uh, waves traveling hits the wall, it's going to bump into the wall, it's going to vibrate the wall molecules, and it's going to transfer some of that kinetic energy um, to the wall. And that increase in kinetic energy inside the wall is going to actually cause the wall molecules to, believe it or not, bump into each other. Um, which is going to warm them up. We know that when we collide things, we get uh, some of that energy is transferred to thermal energy. Um, so it's essentially going to warm the wall up. It's not going to be a whole lot. Like if you were to turn a speaker on and put it towards a wall, it's not like the wall is going to get red hot. Um, but it does warm up the wall. Um, and so we're not losing the sound energy. We're just transferring it to another type of energy. Photosynthesis is another example. Um, so visible light from the sun is absorbed. And remember, visible light is still electromagnetic radiation, just like radio waves and microwaves and ultraviolet and so on. Um, it's just we happen to be able to see that particular range of frequencies on the electromagnetic spectrum. It's still energy though. Um, and so that energy is absorbed by plants and through photosynthesis that light energy is converted into um, stored chemical potential energy that feeds the plants. Uh, a microwave produces microwaves, um, so a microwave in your kitchen, uh, and when you put food into it and those microwaves travel through the inside of the box, your food absorbs the energy from those microwaves. And what that does is, is that it increases the kinetic energy of the molecules in your food. It causes them to bump into each other, and we know that things that bump into each other um, are going to transfer that kinetic energy into thermal energy. Um, which is what heats up your food. But that change in thermal energy is an indicator that those microwaves are being absorbed and this is why your food heats up. Now sometimes energy can be absorbed and then re-emitted as energy, um, although it might be slightly different. So let's take a look at this quick example. Now I have a green laser pointer and a blue laser pointer and I have some glow-in-the-dark paint on this paper. And you can see that when I hit it with the green laser pointer nothing happens. And when I use the blue laser pointer 
it lights up quite a bit. Now blue is a much more energetic frequency of light and so what's happening here is it's not simply being reflected some of that energy is being absorbed and then re-emitted by the paint as a green frequency, a green uh, wavelength of light. Now I'd also mentioned that damage was an indicator of energy absorption, so we're going to talk sunburns. Um, there is a chemical in our skin called melanin. It is the pigment responsible for skin tone. If you have a darker skin tone, you have more melanin. If you have a fair skin tone, you have less melanin. Um, melanin is good because it absorbs that UV radiation and that UV radiation when absorbed by melanin can't go on to damage your uh, DNA. Um, the DNA provides instructions for cell replication and when those instructions are damaged um, that can cause your cells to uncontrollably, uncontrollably replicate uh, which is essentially what we define as cancer. Um, so melanin does absorb UV, but that doesn't mean that if you have a lot of melanin that you won't burn. Everybody can sunburn. If you have more melanin, you won't burn as easily, but you can still burn. You can still damage your DNA and you can still get skin cancer. So it is really important that you are proactive about sunblock. Sunblock, what essentially sunblock does is reflect ultraviolet radiation um, from your skin. It's essentially like a mirror for ultraviolet radiation. If it's reflecting the ultraviolet radiation from your skin, uh, it can't go into your cells and damage your DNA. Now you might be thinking, okay, I'm gonna not put sunblock on because I want to tan. Well, a tan is actually your body's defense mechanism against ultraviolet radiation. When your skin detects that there's more ultraviolet radiation uh, getting through your skin to your cells, uh, it ramps up melanin production. And when you have more pigment in your skin, you appear darker. So that tan that you are seeking out for the summertime actually is your body's way of trying to protect itself uh, because you're already being exposed to too much UV radiation. Um, now what about your eyes? So if you can't see ultraviolet radiation that must mean that you are safe, uh, your eyes are safe, uh, your eyes must not be absorbing the ultraviolet radiation and that is completely wrong. Um, you can't see UV because the cells in your eyes responsible for seeing visible light are not absorbing the ultraviolet radiation, but there is another part of your eyes that does and that can be damaged. The real hazard comes from the fact that you can't see ultraviolet radiation, so you're not going to respond to it like you would like a really bright light. You would kind of you know, squint to block uh, the bright light. If you can't see ultraviolet radiation, you're not going to block it, and so you know, walking around without ultraviolet uh, protecting sunglasses um, results in more ultraviolet radiation getting into your eyes which over time can um, you know actually hurt your eyes so it is really important to wear sunscreen uh, to reflect that ultraviolet radiation uh, and it is also really important to wear sunglasses to protect your eyes as well so we're talking ultraviolet radiation which is just beyond what we're able to see at the higher end of the visible light spectrum if we go to the lower end of the visible light spectrum toward the red um, just beyond what we're able to see there is infrared. Um, and infrared has uh, several uses, uh, one of which is heat. So when we, uh, when heat, thermal energy radiates through space, um, it travels in the form of infrared radiation. Um, you see this in infrared heat lamps, which are those kind of reddish lamps that you might see in restaurants over food. Um, they are emitting infrared radiation, which is what is heating up the food. That, that frequency of light, even though we can't see it, is being absorbed by food and giving it thermal energy, which is what's keeping it warm. Um, another use is remote controls. So your cell phone camera can actually uh, register infrared light. Um, this is useful for face recognition because if you were to, um, if you were able to process infrared radiation with your eyes and you hold your phone up to uh, do the face recognition to unlock it, you would see a lot of infrared light hit your face um, and your phone has to be able to recognize this because it will you know blast your face with infrared light and the reflected light from your face goes back into the camera and that's how the camera identifies you to unlock your phone um, you can actually use your phone camera and i'm going to show you this right now in this example um, hold a remote control up to your phone camera and record it um, and actually you don't even have to record it, you can just uh, you know, have the camera on and you'll actually see the flashing light coming out of the little um, you know, end of the remote control that kind of looks like a little LED. 
if you look at that LED uh, on your own, uh, with your own eyes, you won't see a thing, but your phone camera can pick it up. So try that out if you have a remote control with a little infrared LED on it. So why do we see anything? Uh, we know that our eyes have you know, special receptors that can absorb certain frequencies of visible light uh, or uh, of electromagnetic radiation, which we call visible light. Um, and so what we're actually seeing is just any of that visible light that enters our eyes. So when we look at anything, and we see it, we're only really seeing what light has bounced off of it, what's reflected off of it into our eyes, hit those special cells, send a message to our brain, and our brain interprets that as, you know, different frequencies, different wavelengths, wavelengths of color. So you've never actually seen anything other than the light that bounces off stuff. You're not actually looking at the object, uh, you're just looking at the light that bounced off of that object. So if you want proof of that, go into a room, turn off all the lights, uh, it's gonna be completely dark, and did those objects cease to exist? And the answer is no, there's just no light to bounce off of them and then travel into your eye, hit those cells, send a message to your brain. Um, so think about that for a second. When you're looking at, say, a green leaf or a red rose, what colors are absorbed by those objects and you might think right off the bat oh well a green leaf is absorbing green that's why it's green but think about that for a second if it's absorbing green light how is that green light making it to your eye so the answer in those cases is the red rose is absorbing everything but red it's reflecting the red and that is traveling into your eye the green leaf is reflecting everything but green and the green is reflecting off of it and entering your eye. Let me show you how this works with some different color LEDs and some different colored shirts and it's gonna blow your mind. Alright, I have three shirts here, a blue, a green, and a red shirt and I have some LEDs that I can change the colors of. So right now I'm shining white light on them and white contains all the frequencies of the visible light spectrum. Um, so we see blue light reflected from the blue, green light reflected from the green, and red light reflected from the red shirt. I'm going to change the lights to just shine red onto these shirts. So what do you think you'll see when I do that? Well, remember, the shirts are going to appear uh, to be the color that they can reflect. So if I'm only providing red light, what do you think is going to happen to the shirts? Let's find out. So notice that the red shirt is still bright. The other two look dark, uh, almost black. Let me go ahead and try green light. Now notice that the red shirt, which was just really bright, is now really dark. And the green shirt in the middle is the brightest. I'll go ahead and switch to blue now. And notice that the blue shirt is now the brightest and the other two uh, look void of color now. And let me go back to white light. And now we see the shirts that, as we would see them in the real world. So I can vary the way that these shirts look based on the amount of the different types of light that I hit them with. So again, here's just red. Here is just green, and here is just blue. So I can have some fun with the lights if I, uh, you know, start varying how much, uh, you know, if each type of light is being shined on them. So here I'll set it to blue. And now I'm going to start adding in some red. And notice it looks like I'm like raising a dimmer on the red light, right? Um, if I set the light to green, let's go ahead and add some blue light in here. And notice the blue shirt now got brighter because it now has blue light to reflect. Here's red. I'm going to go ahead and add some green in. And notice how the green shirt got brighter. So again, when we see colors of objects, we are seeing the colors, the frequencies that the object is not absorbing, but reflecting. If the object is absorbing a frequency of light, we are not going to see that because it's never going to reach our eyes. So when we hit the red shirt with anything other than red light, it appeared dark. When we hit the blue shirt with anything other than blue light, it appeared dark. And when we hit the green shirt with anything other than green light, it appeared dark. Um, so basically what's happening is the light is being absorbed and it's not reaching our eyes. So dark is 
actually not really a thing. Dark is just simply the absence of light. Um, just like cold isn't, you know, you say you're cold, that's not really a thing. It just means you lack heat. Um, and so when we're talking light, if something's dark, it means it's lacking light. If an object appears dark or black in color, that means it's absorbing all frequencies of light and therefore it's not going to have a color. And our brain has to make sense of that. And so it, uh, our brain interprets that as, um, you know, dark in appearance. Um, so, you know, a white shirt, for example, is going to reflect all frequencies of light because white light contains all frequencies of light. Um, a dark shirt a, or a black shirt is going to absorb all of those frequencies of visible light, um, basically making it void of light or dark in appearance. That's how we interpret it. So on a hot summer day, what do you think you would want to wear? A white shirt or a dark shirt? And I have a demo that's going to show you the answer to that. So I have two test tubes, one I painted black and one I painted white. Uh, I put a thermometer inside of them with some water and I tracked through time lapse which one heated up faster. And we can see over time that the one that was painted black heated up faster. And why do you think that is? Well, the black test tube, uh, the black paint, is going to absorb all of the different frequencies of light. All of that energy is being absorbed. And so that absorbed energy has to go somewhere and it's transferred to the water, to the thermometer, um, heating it up. The white test tube doesn't heat up nearly as fast. Here's another trial. Um, it does warm up, but not nearly as fast as the darker test tube because again, the darker test tube is absorbing more frequencies, whereas the white test tube is reflecting them. It's not taking in that energy, meaning it's not going to heat up as much. So on a hot summer day, wear a white shirt. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me a message or uh, post a comment on Google Classroom. Um, thanks for watching and have a good one.